Hello and welcome to this video. Based on the request of a subscriber, in this video we are going to do a AS level question from paper 2, variant 22, May June 2019, question 2, based on irrecoverable debts and provision for doubtful debts. The question states that Sufia has provided the following information related to her trade receivable at 31st December 2018. Analysis of trade receivable. The percentage of total trade receivable between 0 to 60 days is 68% and between 61 to 90 days is 20%. Over 90 days is 12%. First point states that at 31st December 2018, the total trade receivable was $54,500. Dixie, who has been declared bankrupt, owed $1,500. This debt was 110 days old at 31st December 2018 and was to be written off. Sophia's policy is to make a provision for doubtful debt as follows. 5% for debts aged between 61 and 90 days old, 7.5% for debts age with over 90 days old and the balance on the provision for doubtful debts at 1st January 2018 was $1,100. In the habit of the question, we are asked to state the journal entries to write off the irrecoverable debts. You see the journal entries and ledger entries are usually done on the basis of the accounting equation and the accounting equation is assets is equal to capital plus liabilities. When we talk about capital, this is the owner's investment in the business and capital increases with the increase in the profit because the profit will be added to the capital and how do we get the profit? We take the incomes from there, we subtract the expense, we get the profit and this profit is added to the capital. And furthermore, when a person is investing in the business, he may require some money for his own use or personal use. And when they withdraw the money, that is when the owner withdraws the money from the business, it is called as drawings. And drawings reduces the capital. So if we regroup this accounting equation, that is assets is equal to capital plus income minus expenses minus drawings plus liability. If we regroup this and take this negatives to the other side, it becomes positive. So it will be assets plus expenses plus drawings is equals to capital plus income plus liability. The accounts which are on the left hand side of the equation that is assets, expenses and drawings will have opening balance on the debit side. And wherever there is an increase in the value of assets or expenses or drawings, then that increase will be debited. And if there are decreases in these accounts, that is decrease in assets, expenses or drawing will be credited. And the accounts which are on the right hand side of the accounting equation, that is capitals, income and liabilities, they will have the opening balance on the credit side. And the increase will be credited and decrease in the value of capital, income or liabilities will be debited. These are the accounting rules for journal entries and for making the ledgers. Now let's do the journal entry to write off our irrecoverable debts. Irrecoverable debts is an expense and when expense increases, what we will do? We will debit it. So irrecoverable debt account will be debited. And why this irrecoverable debt occurred? Because Dixie who is a trade debtor and which is a part of our trade receivable has gone bankrupt. So when the trade debtor goes bankrupt, then what happened? The trade receivable will decrease and decrease in assets should be credited hence it will be Dixie's account credited so this will be the journal entry for writing of the irrecoverable debts that is irrecoverable debts debited Dixie credited before proceeding further let's understand how the provision for doubtful debts affects the financial statements it affects both the income statement as well as the statement of financial position in the income statement when we make the provision for doubtful debts for the first time that is there was no provision for doubtful debts in the past years but for the first time in the current financial year when we make the provision for doubtful debts then what we do is we take the total amount of provision and debit it to the income statement that is we detect the whole amount from the gross profit in the other cases when the business already maintains the provision for doubtful debts what we do is 
whatever is the amount of increase in the value of provision that is say last year the provision for doubtful debts was $1000 and this year the provision for doubtful debt is $1200 so the amount of increase in provision is $200 only this amount will be subtracted from the gross profit or will be debited to the income statement then in the other case where there is a decrease in provision like last year the provision for doubtful debts was $1,500 and this year it is only $1,000. So the difference between the previous year and the current year is $500. Only this amount which is the decrease in the provision for doubtful debts will be credited to the income statement or added to the gross profit. And what we will do in the statement of financial position? We take the total amount of doubtful debts for the current financial year whatever total we got we subtract that from the trade receivable in the statement of financial position so this is how we deal with the adjustments related to the provision for doubtful debts in the b bit of the question we are asked to calculate the amount of provision for doubtful debts at 31st december 2018 so let's do the working before proceeding for the answer it was given that the sufia's policy is to make the provision for doubtful debts as follows 5% for debts aged between 61 and 90 days old and 7.5% for debts aged over 90 days old. So what we will do is first we will calculate the amount of trade receivable which falls in between the period of 61 to 90 days old and over 90 days old. So for 61 to 90 days old what we will do is we will take the total trade receivable which was given as $54,500. And furthermore, in the table, it was stated that the trade receivable which falls between the period of 61 and 90 days old is 20%. So when we multiply 20% with $54,500, we will get $10,900. And the trade receivable which falls for the age which is over 90 days is 12% which is given in the table. So $54,000. $500 multiply with 12% we will get $5,040. Now as we know the amount of trade receivable, we will proceed further and find the provision for doubtful debts. 5% for debts aged between 61 and 90 days also. 5% of 10,900 which will be $545 and 7.5% for debts aged over 90 days old so far. Trade receivable for age over 90 days old is $5,040 and 7.5% of this will be $378. So when we add this to that is $545 plus $378 will get the total amount of provision for doubtful debts at 31st December 2018 as $923. In the CPT of the question, we are asked to prepare the provision for doubtful debts account for the year ended 31st December 2018 and the dates are required. The provision for doubtful debts account will be similar to that of the liabilities account that is we will have the opening balance on the credit side that is balance brought down $1100 and balance brought down will be on the first day of the financial year which is January 1st 2018 in this question. As we have the opening balance on the credit side, the closing balance will be on the debit side and it will be the amount which we have calculated in the bid B of the question, the amount of provision. For doubtful debts at 31st December 2018 is $923. So 31st December 2018, $923. Now, if we see there is a decrease in the provision for doubtful debts, that is, it was $1,100 and now it is $923. I have already mentioned earlier that whenever there is a decrease in the provision for doubtful debts, then what we do is we take the difference. The, here, it, the difference is $177 and this will be credited to the income statement and added to the gross profit. So when we are crediting it in the income statement, naturally it will be debited in the provision for doubtful debts account as income statement $177 and we make the income statement on the last day of the financial year that is 31st December 2018 in this question. So we will write 31st December 
2018 income statement $177 on the debit side of the provision for doubtful debts account and then we total both the sides we will get $1100 on both the sides then after that we will bring down the balance in the next financial year first day of the next financial year which will be January 1st 2019 and balance brought down $923 with this we have completed this bit. In the debit of the question, we are asked to state one accounting concept which is applied when making a provision for doubtful debts. You see, provision for doubtful debts are made on the basis of the prudence concept which states that the profit should neither be overstated or understated as well as the assets here the trade receivable should not be overstated. Or you can also mention matching concept which states that the revenue of an accounting period is matched against the cost of the same period. So you can state any one of the concept and explain the concept for this answer. Next, additional information is provided which states that Sufia is considering changing the basis of provision for doubtful debts to a general provision of 2.5% on all the trade receivables. She has calculated her profit for the year ended 31st December 2018 as $4,300 after writing off Dexy's debt but before making any adjustments for the provision for doubtful debts. In the EBIT of the question, we are asked to describe how this change will affect Sufia's profit and we have to support our answer with the relevant calculations. So let's do the calculations in the working notes based on the existing policy which we have seen in our bit B and uh, bit C of the question where there was a decrease in the provision for doubtful debts by 177 dollars which we did in the c bit of the question so if we take the profit which is given here as four thousand three hundred dollars based on the current calculation which we have calculated in the uh, bit c there will be a decrease in the provision for doubtful debts and decrease in the provision for doubtful debts as i have mentioned there it should be added to the cross profit here if we add to the profit it will be four thousand four hundred and seventy seven dollars so this will be the profit based on the existing policy which we have calculated previously now they have she has proposed that she will change this policy and she will maintain the provision for doubtful debts as 2.5 percent for the overall that is the total trade receivable she will provide 2.5 percent as the provision for doubtful debts so when we calculate this that is $54,500 times 2.5 percent we will get the value as $1,325 now in the previous year it was given that the provision for doubtful debts was $1,100 and if the new proposed policy is applied then the provision for doubtful debt will be $1,325 so here the difference is $225 and this is the increase in the provision for doubtful debts increase in the provision for doubtful debts will be debited to the income statement that is it will be subtracted from the profit so here the profit given is $4,300 from there if we subtract $225 we'll get the value as $4,075 so the difference between the existing policy and the proposed policy when we take the difference in the profit based on that the existing policy the profit we get will be $4,477 for the proposed policy the profit we will get will be $4,075 so the difference will be of $402 which will be less when we take up the proposed policy so we will mention the answer that Sufia's profit now will be $4,075 which we have calculated based on the proposed policy and it will be a decrease of $402. So with this we complete this question. Thanks for watching my videos and have a great life.